what's up y'all mm-hmm. um I hope I hope folks are okay um yeah I uh feel like I've had you know a, a smattering of scolding messages um <laughs> about whiteness that you know those things are necessary right in the process of unlearning things we slip up we get caught in them and then it feels you know it feels icky I like to call it the skippity paps uh, if you don't know the skippity paps, um, uh, I'm like, just type in skippity paps in Google and you'll get the comedian and his hilarious, uh, footage of, <laughs> of cats just fucking people's lives up. Cause that's what cats do. <laughs> but anyway, I say all of that to say that, you know, part of learning, part of growing, part of shifting, changing, evolving, Shedding an old skin is that there's tenderness, right? There's tenderness when you bump up against things without that old skin all of a sudden. Because right? when the skin of whiteness was thick, I, I could have said all the things I said and they wouldn't have even landed because there was an obliviousness to the reality. And now that there is an awareness to the reality of whiteness and a desire to shed it, when, when, what you would bump up to, bump up against in whiteness gets bumped up against as you shed whiteness, it might be a bit more tender. And so, you know, it's another request to lovingly parent yourself. I had a conversation today with a friend and it illuminated a thing that I believe is a tangible and real and powerful action um, that white folks can take to balance, to like work toward balancing the um, emotional, spiritual, economic, political debt um, that that white folks are in collectively. So I did a video a while ago that was about, you know, like there's no amount that you could pay me, right? That would, that would, that would be, um, equitable to the damage that whiteness has caused in my life and in the lives of the people that I love. You can't bring back dead people. You can't, you know, like all of that stuff. Um, and I talked about the fact that you actually, your Venmo donations, your PayPal donations, your subscription to my Patreon is not an act of reparations because reparations is a systemic economic, um, restitution. Uh, for harms caused collectively. And I maintain that, that, you know, reparations is at a government level. However, there are things that individuals can do that help black people at a government and a systemic level. Um, there are individual relationship to race relationship things that you can do that help black people at a systemic level, in, but in their individual lives, right? Because here's the deal. You can change legislation and that's helpful to black people eventually, right? Because legislation changes before culture does, right? Oftentimes, like culture still has to catch up, which is why um, when Brown versus the Board of Education occurred, um, they still had to send in National Guards for black babies to be able to go to integrated schools because culture had not caught up, right? And so there are so there are ways in which you can do things that have systemic impacts on that have personal impacts on the systemic machinations of black people's lives. Here is one specific way. There are a lot of black people with IRS debt. Now, what I would offer is that there should not be a drop of IRS debt that black people owe. The, the, the country is in arrears to black people. In arrears. Dead beat dead arrears. Locked you up because you ain't paid no support in such a long time arrears. And yet... I know multiple people, including my own self, who owe a tremendous amount of money to the IRS, in part because I got no financial literacy education. 
I came from a mama who was on crack, a daddy who had a military career, but that was a very structured and rigid thing that sort of took care of itself. And there wasn't some, there was no place for this education um, around financial literacy to come from. And then I went from being a broke poet who made, you know, if I made $12,000 a year, I was having a great year to all of a sudden making enough money that I owed the IRS, but with no understanding about how to do that, how to file taxes, what, you know, like, so I got audited. It was horrible. It was the worst experience of my life. It was, I mean, it wasn't the worst experience of my life. It was in the top 10 worst experiences of my life. I broke out in hives for a month straight. It was horrible. Um, and the end of that is I owe the IRS a lot of money. I mean, not a lot of money though, you know, like a lot of money for me. A lot of money, like, oh, 50 grand, like that's a lot of money, um, but not shit for some folks. Certainly not shit for some of the people who even watch my videos who are sitting on economic wealth that you, I'm hoping at this point, can see and connect to your privilege, your opportunity and resource. Not saying that it was absent of your hard work. Be clear, there's hard work. And then there is where hard work meets opportunity where hard work meets systemic racism, right? And so some of you, the way to be in realignment, to return to a sense of balance, is to, to find some black people that owe some structural and systemic debt. That could be mortgages. That could be IRS debt. That could be um, liens. There are people who owe back money for... Uh, um, my sister... A uh, husband owed a back money for um, an unemployment lien that they rescinded. They gave him unemployment and then they were like, never mind, and took it back it, it, after, you know, six months. And of course, he didn't have the resource to hire a lawyer to pay somebody. This was when he was 19 years old. So when they went to buy their first home in their 40s, they were at the table and got denied because of that. And he didn't even realize it was there. That's the type of stuff, that's the type of economic um, sh economic racism, right? The economic injustice of a white supremacist delusional system. And so if you're asking, what can I do? And you have access to wealth. I'm going to, I'm going to create a spreadsheet um, some way, I'm going to, some way to collect the names and resources of the kinds of debt that people have. And then I'm going to collect the names and resources of white people who have the resource that want to take care of some debt, some systemic debt on behalf of um, black folks. You can pay off some mortgages. You can pay off some IRS bills. Don't, you know, like, thank you for your $5 here and your $5 there. But some of these folks that I know are watching me, you have resource um, and there's power. There's power in closing the wealth gap because these are the types of things that are what keep um, black people from attaining uh, economic parity. So I'm excited to see what's going to come of this. I'm excited to see who's going to step up. I believe some people are ready to balance, balance their spiritual relationship by doing something different. Let's see where it goes. The great, what am I calling it? The black buyback. We're going to buy back black debt. Buy back black debt.